Hello, ah, I'm here. Okay, perfect. So well, we're going to, have to start with the talk. Um, the topic is how to fool an ADC, right? It's um, basically about um, hardware attacking hardware devices. So the talk, um, well, uh, I'm co-speaker co with Alexander Bosep that um, he didn't manage to, to come, but um, we, it's, a, it's a work in the both of us. Uh, a bit of introduction. We both work uh, at the um, hardware lab we have in, in Madrid. My active has uh, in Madrid, um, Alexander was a security consultant, and uh, we both um, work uh, in um, wear expertise in embedded devices and how we're, how we're hacking. So well, those are our details in case you want to contact us anytime, Twitter or, or email, that's, that's fine. So well, this is a bit um, what um, I'm going to talk today. Um, since this is about uh, how to attack um, embedded systems uh, from um, a pure analog point of view, uh, we have to, 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 to study how the ADCs uh, actually work. So I will spend a bit of the introduction how to explain how these um, devices actually work, uh, which are his, their, their features, how to interface with them, and then we'll, we'll move to the actual, actual ta attacks with the system. So um, how many of you do already know what an ADC is? Just a bit of survey. OK, perfect. Great. And how many of you have already programmed systems with the ADCs, like interfacing with them? All right, perfect. That's great. So for us, I'm going to start like a more general introduction. An ADC is the, the part of the, it's a hardware component that uh, helps the digital system uh, interact with the analog world, right? Um, uh, basically, it's a passive system where you can read all the signals. They, they help you translate what the actual voltages or the actual measurements are. If you want to, for example, read the temperature or current or voltage, this system helps you translate um, the actual uh, signal into values that can be used in a digital system. So it helps you translate into the um, flood, floating point uh, number that you can then operate with that in a, in a digital, a digital manner. Um, these uh, usually are characterized between different, different things. Um, for example, the bandwidth is the type, how much frequency they can actually read. Uh, the signal noise radio is also important. Also, the, um, the sampling rate and all these things are parameters that someone has to choose when, when they're working with them. There are different types of, uh, of ADCs. Um, these are the more common ones. Um, the, the SAR, the Sigma Delta, the pipeline. Um, they are here, like, they are, they are, um, uh, group into which are the conversion rates that they, I, they usually work. So just a simple, simple thing. So how, how, how this uh, ADC work, right? So basically when we have the, the one analog signal that we want to read, we want to know exactly at which po at a certain point of the, of the time, which value is there? Because if we are sampling, for example, the temperature, you want to know exactly which is the, the, the value on that, on that channel at a specific time. So this basically has a very rough approximation in a, in a point that you want to read, just you call the ADC, it gives you a value and you keep that value for, for a while. And then the next time you want to read the, the value, you go back, you ask for, for the, another value and uh, he will probably give you the, the most recent value uh, from the analog signal itself. This is um, like uh, how an ADC looks like from a functional block point of view. Uh, this, is, this is an example for the AD7812. Uh, it's a very common ADC, it's a SAR ADC. Um, but what is inside doesn't really matter right now. I just wanted to point out how they usually work. Uh, they have two, two main interfaces. The left one is the, the one that is hooked to the analog world. Those uh, are called channels. So this specific ADC has eight channels that we can plug signals or systems or anything that we want to measure. If we are, we are in a uh, in a RF environment, we can probably plug the the signal right from an antenna or the temperature, uh, all the voltages that we want to to track around the system. Uh, if we are in a in a monitoring device, and the the part on the right is the uh, the one that is hooked to the serial port is the interface with the host, the host device, which is the one that 
actually miss this values to protect something. Let's say if we, we are sampling which are the voltages on a, of a system because we want to make sure that uh, everything is working okay uh, and we want to keep it in control, we will bring in the channels and say, okay, the, uh, the voltage for the conversion type is it's okay. The voltage for the motor, motor is fine. The voltage for the channel that controls the boiler is fine. So we can, we can sample those values and see what is going on. This is um, how it looks like in a, in, in a real world. This is a chip. In this, this specific package, we have there the, um, the SPI pins, all the, all the other channels. So it's like a, you can have an idea how this, these things look like. Um, this is uh, the, the way these uh, ADCs help, help us um, uh, read what is in the analog world. Uh, they, it's basically like it's, um, it's uh, summarized in this, uh, in this uh, slide. So we basically have a, a voltage reference, which helps us who helps the system decide which is the maximum value we can get in amplitude, right? So for example, uh, and also describes uh, each bit, because we are gonna, find, at the end of the day, since we're interfacing with, uh, we want a digital data, we are gonna get a, a, a bit stream, right? Like let's say if uh, the ADC has a precision of 12 bits, we're gonna get 12 bits worth of data. So each bit uh, has a meaning. So with this, with this uh, calculation, we, once we read the whole, Number we can we can we can do a simple calculation and get the exact the exact value on that right. So we will divide that by one um, k and we get the, the exact value that we are actually creating. So this is more or less how how the ADC work and uh, that someone wants to implement a system or uh, a PLC that has an ADC for reading signals. This is how the the the, the, the from the programming point of view how this is how is, it works. Um, well, since we are looking to ways to attack this, right? I'm going to introduce what aliasing is. It's, um, we have probably studied this on the on high school or on the university. Uh, the aliasing is when uh, there's some distortion distortion on the on the signal, but not because the signal is wrong, because we are not reading it in, a, in the right way, right? So if you go back to the to the uh, image that I showed before. Uh, here we can see that we are sampling the the, the, the input signal. We are when we are not going to, we are not doing it right. So we have the Nyquist rule. That he 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 managed to say that um, at least we need to sample a signal two times the frequency the signal has. Right. So if the signal has a one hertz frequency, at least we should sample at two hertz because otherwise we will gonna get nothing. But uh, well. Even though two times the, the frequency is not enough for all type of signals, because if the signal is too complex or is modulated or something, even though you, you sample twice the, at the double of the frequency of the signal, you won't be getting enough information of the signal. So it has to be slightly higher. So for example, here you, you, we can see that if we are doing it wrong, we, we are not actually getting any close to the, to the signal itself. So this is an, how it looks like when um, we're doing sampling, right? Um, this this flow shows we are sampling at different different frequencies. So the, we have the, the sine wave that we want to we want to actually uh, sample, but uh, we are doing it wrong. So we are getting things that are completely uh, out of the uh, out of the of the uh, uh, they are not accurate enough for for the signal. So we start increasing the frequency of sampling and. A slightly gets getting closer and closer till it finally um, goes to the to the to the right signal. That that would be that we have at least the right frequency. So this, as we can see, if we, we don't match the the signal we want to sample with the with the with the frequency or well, the sampling frequency, we can get into this aliasing problem, which we obviously confuse the system, right? So for for avoiding this. Um, this is the, um, the implementations usually use the anti-aliasing anti filters, uh, which basically does is that if we have something at 1k hertz, uh, we need to put an anti-aliasing filter that blocks all the frequencies beyond uh, 100 hertz to be sure that uh, we are not sampling something above the Nyquist rule, right? So our input system would just block with the, with the help of the anti filter would block all the 
all the frequencies beyond that range. This is, um, as we are security researchers and security people, we all know that in any system, there is the rule of we have to validate the inputs, right? If you are in a web app, you have to validate any input from the user. No matter what, you have to validate it. So this is more or less the same for, for, for ADCs in a, in a pure uh, electrical engineering point, point, point of view. So you also have to validate the inputs because as we, can, we will see in the future in, the, in later uh, in data presentations, it can lead to, to problems in the, in the, with ADCs. So um, why is this, this thing important, right? I mean, um, currently we know that uh, we can hack into PLCs. We can take control of PLCs. There are conferences in Black Hat and all the conferences around the world that show you how to compromise a PLC, a, a SCADA system, or whatever. So uh, right now, it's, we are in a point that the cyber-physical threats are getting more important, which means that what can happen if we compromise this PLC, uh, or we compromise a lighting system. Could we put a bulb to burn, or could we potentially, like this happened, like a exploded power plant or turbine or something like that, right? Because, okay, you, you, you have done a great job, you have compromised a PLC, but what can happen? It's just more like a, you can do, um, you can annoy the, the operators, like trying to to treat some lights or, or do some annoying things, or you can go forward and you can cause real damage, right? So this is, a, this is the key point of the, of the, of the talk here. Uh, well, this is more some simple, simple view of how um, uh, a control system works that probably most of you have already know. We have the, the physical process, the, could be a boiler, could be um, a spinning motor, or anything, anything else. We have sensors that helps the system know in which state the boiler is, or in which state the physical process is, because we need to know it. We need to know exactly what is happening there in order, in order to, to, to actuate, to increase the temperature, to decrease the temperature, to stop the process because it's gone out of control. We have to really know what is going on there. Well, once the system reads this, we, it, it uh, produce an action, and that action is, uh, is uh, going back to the physical process. So what we are focusing with this talk is exactly here on the uh, sensors part, which is exactly the, the place where the ADCs are used. Okay, because uh, for actuators, we have the DAX, the DAC, which is the, the opposite of, the, uh, of an ADC, but it's out of, the, of this talk. So the main, the main idea behind this talk on how to, you can fool an ADC is not how you can fool an ADC, actually. It's how you can fool the, the system using an ADC, right? Because the ADC is a passive component that uh, you could more or less try to, to play with it. But uh, the point is uh, trying to fool, actually, the, the system behind it that is using the ADC. So in a critical infrastructure, I mean, in an ICS system, an SCADA system, you know, in an industrial control system, uh, we, we can have like this type of, uh, of, uh, of uh, deployment, right? We have the control PLC, which is the one that uh, reads the data uh, and, and then uh, adjusts the, the signals to, for, let's say, if we have a, a spinning motor to, to increase the speed, decrease the speed, or, or whatever, right? So we have an analog signal there. And uh, an analog signal, you can only have you have one analog signal there. So uh, once the, this, this uh, voltage or, or this um, uh, signal that goes to the motor or to the, or the histing system to increase or decrease the, the voltage, uh, the SCADA system usually have the monitoring PLCs that helps the system check whether uh, that is actually going well, right? Because you can have the PLC, you can have everything in place, but no one, someone knows to know, is, is everything okay? Uh, all the voltages in the system are okay, and um, sometimes even if you hack into a PLC and you are able to change things, like I could stop this motor, I could uh, put it to work when it's not meant to be working, or increase the, the temperature, that's, those are things that we already know can happen, but uh, if the design, is well, is, the design of the system is properly well done, uh, we have the safety control PLCs and the monitoring system that will raise uh, alarms. So 
what will, it will cause that uh, someone in the control room will notice that and will say, oh, something is extremely wrong with the motor. We're going to turn off that PLC because something is going to happen or they can act, right? So the point here is, could it be possible for an attacker to actually make the safety control room think that everything is okay when it's actually not, or the opposite, think that everything is wrong when it's actually okay. So the, the focus of this talk is trying to fool the ADCs or trying to make the systems that read data from ADCs to think things that are not real, right? And uh, so we have this situation where the safety system, the safety PLC, the monitoring PLC thinks that everything is fine, but we are actually turning on the, the, the actuator, right? We're increasing the, the, the temperature in the boiler or, or decreasing it or making the, the, the motor spin at very weird speeds so they can actually be in broke. So in this talk, uh, we have analyzed six different devices. Uh, these uh, are all Sigma Delta ADCs, except that uh, well, this is a real PLC that we don't actually know what is inside because there is no documentation on it. Um, maybe it's a SAR ADC, but I think it doesn't really matter here. So, okay, we want to attack this way, okay? We want to do this. Which are the actual attack vectors for this? So one may, may think like, okay, you have the SPI interface, so let's try to, to fuss it or do something fancy on that. But uh, since it's all controlled by the host, uh, I think there's not much to do there because you, if you already have in control of the host, you could actually do all this stuff. So we're actually going to focus on how to attack the ADCs from two ways. It's purely from the analog world. So we are going to attack them through the amplitude and frequency. So we're going to start studying a little bit how um, on the amplitude um, on the amplitude world, right? Um, yeah, this is a setup that uh, could be in any any PLC. Uh, we have the the ADC. Which uh, in this example we we have we are monitoring three three different channels. So we have three different input um, input signals there, and we have the fourth the fourth channel that we are monitoring on the channel seven that is controlled by an attacker, right? So the whole system is doing what it has to do. It has to go to the uh, to the ADC, read the data, and using that data make any any action, right? So what we're going to do is um, we play with a bit with the, with the amplitude. So and the, all the data is where you have this, uh, this, um, this uh, table where it shows you which are the valid ran ranges of voltage that you can use with the uh, different channels. So here we're going to play on the negative side of the, of the, of the, to see what, what actually happens right to the an IDC when you, when you supply something that normally is not just to be there or shouldn't be there, right? So uh, we have um, recorded, uh, it, we, we use two different ADCs. This is the AD7706, and then we use another, uh, another ADC, one, which is integrated in a AVR and an admin, admin device. So in this video, we can see that um, here, all the channels, mm, I don't know where I can point here. Here, let's see. Without pointer, it's a bit complicated. So, okay. Um, as you can see, we, what we did was actually uh, plug the with the power supply. We generated different amplitudes, and at the beginning, if we if we go to, I can't really point at the top of the of the ah oh, here. It's before before injecting any 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 voltage, right? So we have four channels. Uh, we have zero, 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 which actually which is the, 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 the amplitude. Okay, thanks. Which is the, hola, hello? Which is the amplitude that um, we are using. And, um, and um, the, the last value is the, the reference level of the, of the, um, of the setup we, we have here. So if we go, now that we come here, at this point, as you can see, the third channel is the one connected to the power supply. Okay, what, what we did was actually uh, reverse the, the polarity, right? So we can generate a uh, negative signal, even though the power supply generates power, uh, positive signal, but uh, we reverse the order. So we're generating negative signal. 
And here we're starting to, to, to increase a bit. So these are like 30 millivolts. And we, we see that uh, since this is supposed to only output uh, positive values, it gets like, subtracted, right? So this is okay. The other two channels are fine. But once we reach the, when the 300 millivolts level, the negative 300 millivolts level, we see that in the other two channels, we are getting readings that they are not actually there. So using the, the funny thing with it is that using just one channel, we were able to affect what is, what is we were able to affect the readings from other channels. So that's one, 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 of, the, one of the attacks that, um, that uh, you can have with this, uh, with this ADCs. And um, on this is actually, is it already playing? It's a different, it's, it's a different, um, different uh, ADCs with one integrated in the, in one board. So here we have the, the, the four or five channels that are connected. The five volts is, um, is the reference. And then when we start injecting the, 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 the negative value, we see that uh, the, there are some weird, some weird uh, uh, readings on different channels. For example, the one that was reading 3.53, that was actually the, the reference level uh, from the uh, diagram, we were able to affect it. So instead of reading 3.3, which would be the actual value, we were able to change the reading of the ADC, just attacking a different, completely different uh, channel. So we didn't really need to, to access it. So as a summary of um, how to attack one IDC from the, from the amplitude side, um, what we did was to, to, to force the voltage into negative uh, values. So what we did basically was uh, trying to go through the boundaries of the system so we can see what happened in there. So um, we saw that with the ADC that we tested, some weird things can happen. So for example, if someone is within a temperature and it's, suddenly it goes to, to the maximum level, it will raise an alarm in the system and some access will take place that didn't need to be taken because the actual channel on the, on the channel is okay. We are only affecting how the ADC reads that, that information from the, from the world. So as I said, just only one simple channel will, will, will render the other channels or other signals can be, can be affected. So with the, the study bit, how the amplitude works, how we can attack a system from the amplitude. And now we are going to check uh, how it works with the frequency, right? Which is the, the next step. So, and I'm going to be do a Talk a bit about Delta Sigma ADCs, which can be a bit boring. So I will try to go very fast through it <laughs> and just highlight the very, the very thing. So a Delta Sigma, one of the properties of the Delta, Delta Sigma ADCs is that they use oversampling of the signal. So they are one of the marketing points of the of the ADCs is that okay, um, we are oversampling the the signal too much and uh, that you don't really need as strict anti-aliasing filters. So we go back to the, the introduction. So since we are sampling probably 20 times the frequency that you are going to, to actually read, you, don't, you, you can't relax that, that, that requirement. So you can have a, a, a more broad bandwidth of uh, no rejection part on the, on the ADC. So, and this is actually how it's advertised on the, on the market, right? Um, since the sampling frequency is very far from the, for the actual spectrum you want to, to, to see, it's, you don't need to, to do as a strict rejection of, uh, of, uh, of frequencies. So to achieve this, uh, the uh, Delta Sigma has different parts. They, uh, I will go a bit fast through this. They had a modulator that um, with the sign or do some comparison. So that's, the, that's the part that goes, does oversampling very fast to get a, a very precise information of the, of the impulse signal. Then they implement uh, a digital low pass filter that is interesting and will be subject of the of what we'll see afterwards. That uh, this low pass filter is which is a, it's a filter that that cuts some some frequencies. And uh, this is more or less how it looks uh, from a functional point of view. You get um, the input signal. It goes through. Uh, the signal is red, and uh, well, at the end of the day, you get a bit, and it goes back. It's feed back, feed back to the to the input, to trying to get more or less what we see here, which is how the the delta sigma works. You have the input signal, and then the output stream of the of the DAC would be would be down here, and uh, well, 
another function block of how how this um, how this works. So okay, forget about it. It's a bit boring. And uh, this is actually the, the functional diagram of the um, of the delta sigma uh, ADC that we are going to attack, the uh, AD7706. So we can see here the modulator and the digital filter, and this is the PGA, which is the um, programmable gain uh, amplitude that uh, it's offered. It's like a feature of the ADC that uh, if you, for example, are trying to sample very weak signals, you could uh, actually like amplify the signal. I mean, it has uh, a number of, uh, of gains that you can set, and it helps you um, get a, a better resolution of the, of the signal because it amplifies a bit the signal and, uh, well, it um, changes the, the cutoff of the different filters. So it's, it's tiny and it's, I mean, it's handy and uh, it will, we will study that uh, later. So this is the setup we have for the for the set, for for this attack. So we use the um, the picoscope to generate signals. Uh, we are here interfacing with the ADC, and uh, here we have the uh, the AD seven seven zero six interfacing interfacing with that. And um, this is more or less how we we perform the 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 attack. Well, this is probably not actually attack. This is we are trying to identify what would happen to the system if we start playing with the frequency, right? So we we are going to start sampling from zero to several megahertz uh, frequency of the of the input signal. We're going to record it, um, do some statistics statistics on on that, and and try to see if everything is okay or there is any any weird thing happening. So this is what I I, I talked before the uh, the um, the gain here. So we are going to focus on this frequency because this is our. It's, this is part of the um, of the of the um, how I call it the filter. So this the frequency here are frequencies that um, when you change the, the gain, uh, these are the, the corners of the of the filter, the the, the points where they let pass an attenuated an attenuated noise as would be. So in the corners, uh, so you have the filter that blocks exactly a huge amount of of signal, and uh, then you have well, the the filters are not ideal, so uh, you have a band that it completely blocks, and then you have a point where you can get an attenuated noise. All right, so just have in mind that we should get at these points an attenuated noise, and we will see what happens afterwards. So once we increase the gain to two, you know, to get more accuracy of the signal, uh, the first corner moves slightly to the right, and uh, instead of being the 32, the 32 is now 76, 76k. So it means that all the frequencies on this range should be should be completely blocked because it's on the on the side of the of the filter that should be completely blocked. All right. So, with more or less what it says uh, what it says there. So this is explaining a bit what I was talking before. We have the 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 filter and blocking areas here, and uh, if we have we gain one, so we see here that. The ADC would pass some some input signal to the to the output being unattenuated, and then we have the 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 other one for the second for the multiple of that. I mean the the, the, name is, the, the numbers are different because we are not using the same clock as the data sheet. It's actually two hundred two megahertz clock, and when we set that to to gain two, what happens is that uh, as I said, the the first corner corresponds to the next the next one, and the uh, thirty one two five all uh, should be completely blocked. So on this demo, we are going to show how this works. So we are we have basically on the uh, this part is the the picoscope interface, and uh, this is what we are actually uh, reading something with the with the Arduino, right? So uh, we are increasing the, the frequencies. These are frequencies that should be okay with ADC. So uh, we are generating them and we are reading them uh, perfectly fine. We have three three hertz, um, and we are also supplying. It's kind of very really, really well uh, read here, but we are supplying an an amplitude of one volt. So uh, we have here. It's offset it also to to be able to to get it right. So we are getting here the signal, and once we get off the the filter, we start getting attenuated attenuated signal here, and what we get here is like. We're out of the, the, the filters. We're already out of the frequencies that are supposed to be sampled by ADC. So this is OK. We are not having any aliasing problems. So we are getting noise, or we're getting 
we're getting anything else. We, we can see we started um, increasing the we started increasing the, the the frequencies, and we get I'm gonna say a bit of a spoil that the frequencies they are three one two five zero. So as we can see that these are frequencies that should be completely blocked by the system. All right. So where we are actually seeing here is that uh, once we get closer to the to the actual to the actual value here, we will start seeing some some um, weird things. Okay, this will be okay because it's noise and uh, it's uh, perfectly fine. We are we are able to control it. But when we reach the magic number of three three one two five zero, we see that the 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 ADC is actually reading a completely different signal. Right, it's a half hertz uh, signal that. Uh, it's not in the system, uh, and we are generating the input signal is a, a 31k signal. So uh, this is a very important thing, right? Because it's like we are generating a signal that uh, would cause a problem to an actuator, but uh, the system PLC would think that uh, it's reading something completely different. So we managed to using the frequency. To, to make the safety critical system think that uh, things are okay or not are okay because if um, the monitoring system is expecting this type of signal or any other value that we can generate through here, it will read it and it will say, okay, it's totally fine, but we were injecting something completely completely different. So this is uh, what happens here. It's more or less the, the, the whole sweep between the, the frequencies around that, that specific point. And uh, there is also a video here. So also one, one thing that happens here is that in the data sheet it says that in this point should be uh, an attenuating noise, right? So maybe it would be okay if we get uh, some noise on that point that is not, a, not attenuating, but the, the, the thing is that um, we are getting exactly the same signal that we are putting in the input, but uh, at a different frequency. So it's a, a very weird thing that uh, happens with this LEC. And uh, what would ha should happen at this frequency is that it would be com should be completely blocked. So, but, and the video shows how we, how it is the output of the ADC once we, we, we reach to the, to the three, uh, three, one, two, five, four signal. So we are getting closer, that's okay, that's noise. That should be completely fine for uh, for the system, but once we are getting closer and closer, we start seeing that we are we approach the input uh, voltage that we that we supplied, and uh, we are almost there. So we are starting to see exactly the signal that uh, that we got, and then we go back to the to the uh, to the noise again. Okay, let's pass this. And um, okay, so for this is a pure theoretical point of view. So how this. Uh, how this would work in a, how could we generate signals that um, matches uh, the, um, what the, the, uh, the, uh, the simple ADC is working? Because, I mean, okay, we were able to inject the signal and get something from the output, but this would only work if we, are, we manage to, to, to let the, the PLC, the safety PLC system, see exactly what he thinks has to be in the line. Because he's, if, uh, for example, he's, looking for that square signal and we inject something, a sign web, it will fail. And uh, the monitoring system will realize that something is wrong on the line. So as a, an example here, we're, we are inputting different types of, um, of uh, signals. And as you can see, they are not exactly the same because we're, in, we're injecting them as a, at a 31K kilohertz and the, the output is um, half a hertz. Uh, but okay, you can see that we, with the, with the editor of the microscope, we can generate any type of signal. So the thing that is happening here is uh, the ADC is not blocking at all the signal that should be blocked, and it's actually getting the signal as it and, and multiplying it by two because we are in the, in the game too. So this is a, a good scenario. So here we kept playing with the signals. As you can see, it's not the same because it's sampled and uh, there are some minor, minor changes on the, on the readings. So this is what happened for the AD7706. So we started thinking, okay, what is going on here? I mean, why is this happening like this, right? So uh, we thought about maybe in the filter, there is some areas where 
the no trans noise transition, so, but at the end of the day, we have no idea what happened, right? So that was our first conclusion. We, we have a clue. We kept thinking and uh, no idea. We didn't come up with any, with any possible explanation until Alexander thinking about his, okay, maybe it's a possible integer overflow. I mean, this is our spe speculation, right? Because we, don't, we haven't built an ADC ever. We, uh, we don't know exactly how these sigma delta things are, are made from the BSDL point of view, but these are uh, speculations. So Alexander started working on, and uh, well, he got uh, how the filter is implemented um, somewhere. He got the, the code, and uh, we started uh, working on creating a simulation on, on Python, right? So um, we created the signal. So this is the uh, how the filter would work. Uh, this is fine. The, a total fine filter where we input the, the signal and, and we get noise. So there is nothing there. It's just, just noise. So in order to prove that or to test whether what would happen if we, we put an integer overflow on the filter implementation, we, this is the, the Python code. Um, so we created this uh, specific overflow plus. So if the sum goes over uh, a limit, it gets overflowed on the, on the output. So okay, well, at the beginning, of, we don't know what is going to happen out of this. But interestingly, it is more or less the same what we got on the ADC. So we have this very high frequency signal. And uh, on the output, after introducing the integer overflow on the, on the filter calculations, we got the much lower frequency uh, signal. So maybe this is just a plausible explanation that just you know, was, was fun to try. So we also went one step ahead, and we did some decapping of the, of the chip, thanks to our Shadow Lab, to see whether we could see that uh, it was a microprocessor or that could, something that could validate or, or a song. Right, or the integrated overflow. But uh, from here, uh, we, we can't see much. And uh, well, this is uh, the clock generation, the voltages, and this is some CMOS logic, but it doesn't look like the microprocessor. So maybe we were completely wrong. Or maybe, we, well, you can also introduce bugs if you're programming on very low, you could possibly uh, do some bad calculations and get some integrated overflows. But who knows? Uh, the next device is the, well, that was entirely with the AD7706, and how we, we studied that, and we found frequencies that someone could hide uh, what he's actually doing, right? So in this, uh, when using this PLC, which is an actual PLC, we don't know exactly with which type of EDC it has, uh, we created like a, a setup, right? Like a real uh, power plant setup, where we have the, the, the PLC, uh, the turbine here that is generating power for the nuclear plant, and the, the, the controlling room, the control room that uh, is monitoring what is going on there. So, okay, it would have noise. It, it would make a noise, but I would try to see it. And uh, so we basically doing this same, um, uh, playing with the frequencies. Uh, it's a bit different than the one before, but I will show you how it looks like. Um, this, right now we are, we are generating the signal in a, in a right way. Uh, you don't see anything weird there. The PLC beats the line and everything, everything is fine. But uh, in a moment, you will start, if you see the, the, the motor, you will see that uh, it starts making weird moves. So that's when we started introducing that. You see that it's making weird moves. That means that we are uh, not uh, driving the motor in the right way. We are inputting weird frequencies into the speed. So it means that, uh, well, if this is a huge um, turbine or a huge motor, uh, you could actually break it because you are causing lots of vibrations on them, on everything around it. And so and well, the, and the important thing is that uh, the safety PLC th system still thinks that everything is fine, that you're supplying the continuous 3.6 volt, um, right? So um, this is the code we used to, to generate this, uh, basically, the way, as I said before, the main thing we want to do is to try to fool the, the host of the ADC, right? So, okay, we can fool the ADC, but the point is to, to, to fool the, the system that is using the ADC, trying to make anything that I see and things that are not there. So, we basically here, we, we put uh, the line to the right value for a certain amount of time, and after that time, we introduce this, uh, this fast uh, switching on and off the uh, the, 
driving the motor very fast with a high frequency. So that was the, the actual movement that you saw are actually produced by that amount right, of code. And as you can, as you saw from the, from the video, the, uh, the actual readings of the value is totally fine. It doesn't really detect the ups and downs of the, of the signal. So whether it should be a 10 or 8 or indicate that something is wrong with the, with the line. So the waveform that we generated is more or less like this. So uh, why it works? So why this, this works is uh, because uh, the uh, ADC is, well, the, not the ADC, the way the programmers, uh, or where I also worked a few years ago with this type of systems, uh, usually do is you read a value and, uh, and then you start doing something, right? You are not continuously monitoring the, the system because you say, okay, I'm gonna monitor this, let's do it once per second or every two seconds, something like that. You probably read like a, during a 100 milliseconds, you read a few values, you, do, you take the average to, to, to remove some outliers that can cause some quantification problems and everything is fine, and then you go to sleep. But following this approach, what is happening is that, of course, while you are sleeping, the system can be, can, can be changing. So that's exactly what um, happened on this, uh, on this uh, PLC. Uh, it's really the signal, but it, it does this type of uh, written sleep, written and sleep. So during the times the, the, the PLC is actually sleeping, we can inject signals very fast and cause uh, weird problems that are the, like the one that you saw. Uh, we could use that designer. This is another example of what we could use, right? Uh, on, the, on the bottom is the, um, the time that the software is actually reading, and during the other time is doing something else. It's probably not sleeping, but it's doing calculations or maybe actually sleeping. I, I actually did that quite a few in the past. So, well, that's also with the. Um, with the PLC system, and uh, we also started more ADCs, right? We, we had six. Uh, we started this one, which uh, you can see, it's just, this is the same, the same procedure we did before. We started from zero to several megahertz. Um, this takes, because we're using Python and blah, 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 this takes several weeks to, to connect. It's not something that you calculate in a, in a few minutes. So it can, I think it took uh, like a, a month per, per per ADC to, to get the whole frequency range. So as we can see here, uh, this is uh, all these frequencies, you're getting some unattenuated signal, but it's uh, not enough. This is the area where we're getting the right signal, the input signal, and the one that we want to read, but we, we keep increasing the, um, the frequency. We start getting points where, okay, you get some noise. Did you find this, this area, which is more or less the same input and the same amplitude of the, of the input. But in this case, um, this, we, we don't get the same input signal as we happen with the 87706. Uh, here we get a noise, right? So we get an anti noise. noise. Uh, could we, could this we used for an attacker? We have to study it more because we, you have to, it depends on how much you can control that noise. If that noise in a more or less statistical value, you can get to a certain level, maybe in some cases work. But it's not like as it's just in the other one that it actually replicates your your signal at a different at a different frequency. Well, this is a, a magnitude, a magnified part of the of the beginning. Uh, we also studied this uh, other ADC, which more or less uh, performs the the same. And this is funny because here in the, this this both seem similar, but this one is something in this area where we have the an attenuated well the same level of the of the amplitude of the of the input. Uh, even though we would play with different um, with different uh, uh, waveforms, uh, we were getting always the sine wave. No matter what input we got, it was always the, the sine wave, but we couldn't control it. So this would work if um, the safety system is expecting exactly that waveform and is expecting the same and that frequency to could fool the, the, the PLC with, the, with this ADC, but it's more complicated than the first one that, that, that we saw. And this always, someone does the things right. So this is how it should look like when you have properly implemented uh, anti-aliasing filter and everything. Uh, that you get the, the signal at the beginning. This is a magnified view of the beginning. So you get a signal on the ranges that you have to get a signal, but beyond that, you don't get anything else. It doesn't matter which frequency you input. So with this ADC, uh, you, everything should be fine. And, and then we also tested the 
the Cypress PDS uh, OC5, which is um, a, a SOG which has a FPGA and allows you to write some logic on it. And uh, it was very fun because we found this output that uh, we don't know what it is. So it's just, what is that? So at some frequencies, so how it looks like is for, let's say, uh, 50Ks, you're getting this value. 50Ks plus 1 hertz, you're getting this value. 50Ks plus 2 hertz, you're getting another value. So it's extremely weird uh, response to the, to the frequencies. And of course, this part here is also very interesting, right? Because we, we have no clue. We have to do more, more research on this and uh, we'll see what, what, uh, what is going on. And this is a magnification again of the, of the beginning. So this is the weird looking output you get. And uh, this is a summary table of um, how we see a complicated or impossible is to, to fully assisting using these, uh, these ADCs. And uh, as a final uh, thought, um, the recommendation here is always like validate your input the same way we do with the uh, with uh, web browsers, with uh, mobile apps, anything that gets an input from the outside should be validated. It's the, very, the same thing. So the only thing is that uh, we probably, there is no much attention on the pure electrical uh, part of the, of the systems. So um, even though uh, on some uh, data sets, they, re re they recommend using anti-aliasing filters, sometimes they are too, too relaxed that allow you to, to put like 50K uh, bandwidth. So, if you're using a system with a narrow bandwidth, try to put a, an anti aliasing filter for that part. And uh, well, that's it. So, any question or, or anything? <laughs> Thank you. So you mentioned that it could be this integer overflow. So you seem to think that it is a digital problem, in fact. Or is it an electrical problem, like some parapsid currents or interference or? It is a, a digital problem that causes, the, uh, causes the, the, the thing because at the end of the day, most of these systems, some of them has a microprocessor inside that, that drives the whole reading, the whole uh, output in because they, after, they have to also convert to SPI. And if, as we know, if you have software, you can update, you can fix, you can do everything instead of changing the whole, uh, the whole uh, thing with the BGSTL, which is more more complicated and but uh, in fact, yes, if uh, it's actually integral overflow, which could be, I don't know, if someone has more experience with that, we are really happy to hear. But uh, yeah, it's a totally inter digital thing. How much of the behavior do you think is down to um, anomalies or weaknesses, and how much down to just a normal behavior of Z transform type? Sorry, I, I didn't get the question. How, how much behavior is, 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 is maybe anomalous or due to weaknesses in, in, in implementation like an overflow? Or how much do you think is just down to the normal characteristics of taking something into the Z transform and out of here <laughs> with digital filtering? Um, the thing is, if, uh, even in the 87706, if you put the proper anti-aliasing filter, the, this attack should be, should be stopped. Uh, it's like a... If we have, do you got the database? If uh, you, the database is okay, but if you do use it wrong, you're gonna get SQL injections, right? So it's more or less the same. The ADC is what it is. Um, maybe that's a feature that can't be changed. Uh, but if you properly uh, narrow the bandwidth that you are using, you, you won't be getting these problems. This problem arises because for the delta sigma ADCs, the the marketing point is like you don't need as a strict. Uh, anti aliasing filter because it's over sampling. So if you are sampling and uh, 10 times or 20 times the, the frequency you're reading, uh, you don't need that much stuff. But uh, we've shown that uh, if you go above the, that limit, even below the anti aliasing filter, start cutting off the, the, fre the frequencies, they can be, they, there can be problems. And um, 
I mean, and that's one thing, one of the questions you ask. And the other one is uh, whether that is a problem of the of the ADC. I think if the same data set shows you that uh, that um, uh, at a gain two, the frequency we are using should be blocked. It's an implementation issue, or the or the or the or the data set is wrong. So something is missing there, or the data set is not properly written. That could be also be true, or uh, they are doing wrong in the in the in whatever thing they they are doing. Mainly because also I don't I don't know. This is just a speculation, but they don't expect anyone trying to do these type of things, right? It's like when the early days, no one did anything on that anything on the software, right? No one validated anything. You just get everything on the IOTL, so the kernel, you assume that uh, the pointers you were getting were kernel space. But what happens if you're, if you're using user space pointers, right? More or less the same. Uh, things are there, they could be broken, so you have to, to validate whatever goes in there and make sure that it matches where, what it has to, has to be. Thank you. Sure. Thanks.